I've never had to live in a shelter. And I just think that I, my mother never gave up on me. You know, no matter what she went through, and I saw her go through far more. If, if I thought my, anything I went through in life was hard, then it was like a hundred times that for her. And I never, she never gave up on me, and she never gave up on my sisters and brothers. And I just think that um, if God is in you, then there's nothing the world can bring against you to break you. If God is in you, you just don't break. You know what I mean? Because you have this faith that he will suffice. He'll give you everything you need eventually, even when you're crying. Up to him, you know, you're not crying and, and giving up, you're just crying out, I can't go any further, and at that point when you just let it go, like I can't do any more, God help me I'm crying out or whatever, he just kind of just scoops you up and takes you along and you look back and you don't even know how you got from point A to point B, but you're here, and that's kind of just how it goes, I can't tell you I know no special tricks, because I don't <laughs> I, I don't have no special advice to give anybody, I follow God, I mean, some people choose other things or to call it something else. They got different kind of practices, you know, yoga and breathing. I do all that stuff too, but at the ultimate, you know, it's like, I follow God. My mother taught me that. I saw her go through so many things, but through it all, she triumphed because she kept God at the forefront of everything, and that, that was her answer to everything, prayer. So that's kind of what I do. And, and motivation, you know, you got to keep moving. You can never stop. You're living. But, you know, your life is not going to stop. As long as you're breathing, things are going to keep moving, and you can't stop in the midst of it. That's just kind of impossible to me. Okay. And I wanted to ask you about your, I want to talk about your your first album back in 2004, that Complex Simplicity. And they really, like, I was reading the review. I mean, I heard it, but I was listening to reading the reviews and everything, too. And they basically compared it to a classic, and they compared it to the people like Mary J. Blige, Denise Williams, Tina Marie. And I want to know, how do you feel about that? Uh, it's surreal. You know, it's very surreal. And it's it's crazy because I just don't know, sweetie. I don't even know how to tell you how I feel about that because it's just surreal. You know, like, I, I still don't grasp that. And it's been a long time. People will walk up to me on the street and just be like, I just want to tell you that this album did. And that, to me, the people walking up to you on the street and, like, one-on-one, it's far more than any critic that gets paid to say things could ever, you know, don't get me wrong, I appreciate the critics saying that, I really, really do. I think the critical acclaim is one of the reasons why I can continue to make music and make money doing it, but when people walk up to you on the street and tell you how much something affects them or come up to you shaking and crying at a concert, like, yo, you really affect me and I just want you to know how you got me through, you just, all I can think of is like, I didn't do it though, you know what I mean, like, I can't explain it, like, you know, I know that I'm just Tidra and I know that I'm just this little girl that was just trying to figure my life out and I just wrote out what I was thinking trying to figure my life out and my emotions and love and, and life all in, on these songs because I was going through those things at that time that's all I was doing so I can't can't even wrap my head around it I'm, I'm appreciative and I feel very honored and blessed but I'm humble because I know that that was something that was some experience God had me going through at the time and I don't know I don't even know. I, I really don't know, but I'm appreciative. I just know that, you know, that's beyond me. And I try to look at my talent in that sense, period, because I know where it comes from. And I know that at any moment I'm not meant to do this anymore. He'll take that and let somebody else be the, the vessel for that. You know, I, I just feel like I'm just here to, even if it's about a, a song about sex or whatever, I'm just here to open my heart and pour out whatever it is that God puts on it for me to say. And that's all I did, so I don't know. It's very hard for me to wrap my head around it. I'm appreciative, though. Yeah, I was going to say, too, but at the same time, it didn't um, it didn't really get a lot of mainstream success, and I wanted to say, like, what do you think the reason behind that, like, bad promotion or, like, just people just slept on it or what? Um, well, people may have slept on it because it just was nothing to bring them to it uh, like that, you know. It was one video, and then it was a wrap, you know what I mean? And that's okay because everything works at God's feet and his will and his time. And so I just figured, as well, my mind state was never to be just on a level of like a Beyonce or something like that. It still isn't to this day. I, I just wanted to make music and travel the world and have enough fans to like pay enough money for me to take care of my kids to live comfortable. Like really, honestly, I just, um, I don't think I ever really wanted stardom and, and everybody that you, that you see with that wanted it and they, and they went for it you know and I think I just more so felt to make quality music and um, 
be a good performer and uh, try to do it as long as I can. My goals are a little bit different than a lot of people in the music industry because I never wanted to be a superstar. I say, what, what's your zodiac sign? I wanted to make music. What's your uh, zodiac sign? I would be a sexy Sagittarius. Oh, I was say, you got a lot of confidence. <laughs> I feel the same way, though, because, like, at the same time, I want to be successful, but I don't want to be, like, out there, out there, because, I don't know, I still want a little... I want to be out there, out there, sweetheart. I want to be whatever God has me. But my intention is not to make people love me, because I love myself, and God loves me, and my family loves me. So if they choose to, great. If they don't, I can't do shit about that. I'm not about to stress my life. You know, and that, you have to have a personality that wants people to love you to be a superstar, that cares if people are displeased with you. You know, only re- only way I would care if somebody's displeased is if I've done something that I know in my heart of hearts that have hurt you. But oh. I can't please everybody. I, I can't please everybody, and I'm not going to ever start being that kind of person. I would say, so this, this actually goes to, uh, it was another article I read I read from you that you did. It was a call, it was said, uh, I choose to be an artist over fame, so it has to kind of relate to that. Like, you just want to be a real artist and do what you feel. I want to be an artist. I want to be an artist, like, in every sense, you know. I want to one day get to a point where I can design furniture. You know, I want to really take time and travel the world, and I want to get inside of myself as a sketch artist, you know. I want to do a lot. I just feel like God has given me creativity, and it's abundant. I don't have to, I don't have to push myself to you know one medium. I read somewhere where Fiona Apple, who I love and adore her for her first and second album, um, and she said, I don't always want to be a singer and songwriter. It's not who I am. And I'm not saying it's in the sense of me. I'm just saying what she said. She said, it's not who I am. So some days I just want to be the girl on Santa Monica Beach bumming, you know, with my guitar just sitting there, chilling. That's some days that's who I want to be. And I think that you have to want to always be on in order to be a superstar. But you could be a rock star every day, all day. Because it's just a part of your personality and what you were born with. And I feel like certain people, when God let them out their mother's womb, they came out with this little thing about them. And I think I got that thing, that rock star thing. It's not about superstardom for me. You know, I wasn't made who I am. Uh, what my personality is is not contrived. It's just who I am. And I've learned over a period of time from high school to the age I am now that it's something about that is magnetic. And I don't say that in the sense of arrogance. I really don't. It's all observation. And, you know, it's something magnetic about the way I speak about myself, the way I feel about myself. I feel good about myself, and I think people like to be around me because I feel good about myself. And then some people totally get the fuck away from me because they feel like she feels too good about herself. You know what I mean? I don't know. But superstardom, fame, I feel so good about myself. I don't need somebody else to tell me I'm special. I know it, you know, and it's not that I wouldn't appreciate it. It's not that um, I won't take it if that's what God has for me and do my best with it. It's just not my desire, and I have to be honest about that. Yeah, and I would say I know you know you've been dropping a lot of mixtapes, and um, I actually listened to your last one, The Royal Patients, and I was reading you got a new album coming out too. So I just wanted you to talk about both of them, the mixtape and the album. Um, well, all my mixtapes are just a uh, um, necessary thing I have to do to relieve myself of music. You know that I have to get it out, and it's, it's most of the time it's songs I've done over a large period of time, and you know. Even though I do the music for myself, I'm aware there's a lot of people that support me, and they continue to support me, and they push me along, and they tell me, don't quit, never, please keep your best music, and that's what I do free mixtapes for, because people want to hear my music, you know? I really wish music could be free. I have this theory that it should be some type of sponsorship that pays for music, and everybody gets music free, and then you just get your, you know, royalties from the radio and licensing and stuff like that. I think music should be free. It should be like... I ain't going to say the other thing I think should be free. And food should be free and shelter should be free. But those things should just be free, you know. But um, I do that because it's emotions that I feel like I want to get out. So I get them out in song. But as much as I do it for myself, like I said, I do want people that do appreciate what I do to hear it. And that's what that's for. And I know I've been taking a very long time to get an album out to everyone. And people get frustrated with me. But I think sometimes when I give them bits and pieces of music to let them know that I'm still doing music, that I have every intention of putting out an album, it's a lot that the consumer don't understand about what it takes to put out an album, you know, and it's all as well, this is my life. It's not a career. It's a, my life, and my career happens to be in my life, and sometimes in my life, certain things happen where my career can't be the only focus. I have twin sons, and sometimes I have to just 
fall back and take care of what needs to be taken care of for my home base to be together. And that time had to happen for me and then get back into music. And then also, as well, shifting careers. You know, at a certain point I had to look at what was making the money and writing was making the money. So I just went over there and got the money. But then at a certain point I just realized, okay, it's time because I feel exactly like what I said I was, the young liner. You know, I called myself the young liner since the first album, but I didn't even know why. But today I truly understand it. It's very clear it's time to put out the album because I understand exactly what I'm talking about now. The vision was given to me a long time ago, but I was working on the vision for years and years and years and years, and that's where you get all these little mixtapes and stuff from because I hadn't solidified what it was I was supposed to do and what the message that I was really trying to say. And um, now I got it. So now it's time. And it may be, you know, far along from when people expect it or when they want it, but that's just not how shit works all the time. Yeah, I mean, so people can still rock with me. I was say actually, uh, like I, I said, I was listening to the mixtape. Like it's all original music, so shit, it really it sounds like an album to me because it's all original music. Yeah, a lot of them are like original stuff. I put a lot of original stuff out, but that's not what I want the young lines to be. You know, don't get me wrong; it's you might find similarities.